Hey everyone, you just tuned in to the NetSuite podcast. I'm your host, Kendall Fisher, and I've got an out of this world episode for you today. In case you haven't heard, we launched a brand new initiative here at NetSuite called da, 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 The Superheroes of Growth. Okay, maybe I'll just stick to my day job. But anyway, we're kicking things off this week with our very first superhero, Captain Finance. But I don't wanna give away too much because that's exactly what we'll be diving into during this episode. So I can say we'll be joined by the Director of Communications, Danielle Tarp, and NetSuite Editor-in-Chief, Fritz Nelson, to give us all the awesome details. And after that, we'll chat with a real life superhero of finance, Shauna Roulette, the CFO of Man Lake, the company providing beekeeping supplies to the beginning beekeeping hobbyists, as well as beekeeping professionals. She'll uncover some of her superpowers by explaining a bit more about her role in the company and how the role of the CFO in general has evolved so much recently. Needless to say, it's an episode you won't wanna miss. Stay tuned. You're listening to the NetSuite Podcast, where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite, why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. All right, first up, we're bringing on Director of Communications, Danielle Tarp, as well as NetSuite Editor-in-Chief, Fritz Nelson, to give us all the awesome details about the superheroes of growth and Captain Finance. Hi, Danielle, welcome to the NetSuite Podcast, and Fritz, welcome back. Thanks, I'm excited to be here. Excited Thanks to have for having you. Me. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> I was gonna make a comment that like, Danielle, super excited to have you here. Fritz, not so sure. <laughs> I was We're surprised out. as well when I heard that Fritz was invited back, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Fritz, you know, we just have to give you a hard time. Um, okay. So I told our listeners that we are going to be talking about superheroes today, but before we get into all of that, I think in order for our listeners to understand why we're chatting with you two about this and how all of this came together, it's important to give them some insight into both of you and what you do here at NetSuite. So set the scene of us, if you will, Fritz, you can kick us off. Oh, I get to go first. I, well, we're, we're both in the marketing department and I oversee the content team and we produce things like uh, the brain yard, I work with you, Kendall, on uh, video and audio, and we have the NetSuite blog and and a bunch of other things we do on the content side. Awesome. Yeah, you know, Fritz, I I had you go first because, of course, age before beauty. So, Danielle, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I was offended until you just said that, Kendall, so you're really good at this. Um, Yeah, absolutely. So I head up communications and customer marketing um, over here at NetSuite. I work closely with, obviously, Fritz and the content team. But in general, my role that I play is helping communicate our story, the NetSuite story, out to the market, as well as our customer stories. So I own also all the channels which we do that, including, you know, the social, PR, our website, et cetera. Um, so super excited to talk about the superheroes today. Yes, that brings us to this topic, the superheroes of growth. Why are we talking about superheroes and what in the world are the superheroes of growth, Danielle? So first, who doesn't love a superhero? Um, I've talked to a number of people in NetSuite and there's only been a few out of hundreds that have really come back being like, hmm, superheroes? I mean, we've seen such amazing success with the superhero stories in film studios and Marvel and everyone at the end of the day wants to root for a superhero. And right now everyone wants to root for something. So why not create our own superheroes to root for. And the superheroes that we're creating really are in the the embodiment of our customers. Um, And this idea of growth really comes from what we help our customers do. You know, we help our, these customers realize what's possible, accelerate that growth, but they're the ones actually doing it. Every function, every department, it plays a role. And so the superheroes of growth, while we're starting with the superheroes of finance, This is a little spoiler alert that there might be more departments to come down the line. And I'm sure. Oh, man. 
<laughs> yeah, Fritz. But I mean, like you, I know you've been in the trenches and all of this too, um, helping write a lot of like the backstories to these superheroes, which has been super exciting. But I mean, like, what does this mean in your opinion? Well, I think just to add on to what Danielle is saying, I think a lot of the people that we talk to every day, our customers, they they're kind of the hidden heroes, you know, the unsung heroes. And, and in, in a way, this is our chance to elevate them and to say thank you. Because I think in a lot of cases, like if you take the accounting department, just as an example, you know, we all know they exist. Um, and I think we all appreciate that they're there, but we kind of forget. And, and, and we only remember, you know, maybe when something goes bad, if, you know, paychecks don't go out or there was an error or, um, you know, the books are not balanced or, or, you know, just something is wrong rather than everything is functioning smoothly, we kind of forget. And yeah. so I think that's a mistake. And I think, you know, what we want to do is, is to um, bring them out into the sunlight mm -hmm. and or we want to shine some light on them ourselves. Yeah, give them the spotlight for once, you know? That's um, right. So Danielle, okay. I, I understand like we all want a superhero to root for, especially right now, but like, can you walk me through how you came up with this idea? Absolutely. And I, I have to tell you, I cannot take all the credit, um, for this because it actually came one of our accounting experts in the business. He randomly sent me this image that he had created and it was around this notorious green eye shape that accountants obviously have been known to wear from time to time. Mm -hmm. And he had created this green eye shape, like the green lantern. And I looked at it and I was like, there's something here. Um, not, you know, and it's funny because we were going to start with just the accounting audience. And as we started building these superheroes, we were like, this has, this has the poten potential for so much more. Um, and so we took that idea of this green eye shade and the green lantern and really ran with it. And now it became a full troop of superheroes. Um, but the idea here is really to create this fun and entertaining way for businesses to digest the content they need. Um, to understand what's going on in the world and what they need to do to grow their business. And it's funny because my parents actually own a small business. Yeah. And every time that I've, you know, made decisions in this campaign, I always kind of put my parents' uh, hat on, which I, I try not to do too often, um, <laughs> and just say, you know, would they get this and would they like it? Um, yeah. And, you know, would they find it just as entertaining as I'm finding it? So that's kind of a little bit of the history on that. So that kind of bodes the question, like, what are we hoping this brings our customers and how does this all tie in with NetSuite, like our actual product? Yeah. I mean, like to go on what Fritz was saying, our customers, they're in the trenches. Like we, we don't make our customers grow, we help them. And so the idea of this campaign is really to give them every tool and resource they need, but deliver it in a really fun and entertaining and creative way so that they almost feel like they're not reading about what their business challenges are or how to solve them. And obviously, you know, when you talk about challenges, a lot of our, our customers are facing the same challenges. Um, and so how can we kind of bring them all together in this community of superheroes? So when it comes to growth, basically what you're saying is the customer is Batman and we're really just Alfred. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's the perfect <laughs> analogy for it. <laughs> um, so Fritz, we're kicking things off with captain finance. Can you tell us a little about her, which I think is very important to note. Um, and what is her story? Well, Kendall, she's a Sagittarius. Um, she's on <laughs> Tinder and, uh, no, I, I think Tinder, Tinder is so 2016. Yeah. I was just about to say, Fritz, make <laughs> Bumble. Okay. Bumble. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. I still, uh, <laughs> I still part my hair on the side too. Um, yeah, and wear skinny jeans. <laughs> the so we we started with Captain Finance because you know in a lot of ways the finance role and the finance chief has become more and more of a leader inside of the organization, um, steering the ship. They can see all, not just the numbers, but the strategy behind the numbers. And so we we started with Captain Finance and. Her name in real life is Jen Ledger. Um, mm -hmm. She was uh, in, in her younger days, a gymnast, a savant entrepreneur. She started a lemonade business when she was quite young. And um, her parents 
had a little Excel mishap. And um, with, with all of the superheroes and villains, by the way, we create an origin story and we talk about what their motivations are, how they got, what their superpowers are, how they got them. Her motivation is her, the, the loss of her parents mm -hmm. in this Excel mishap. And um, so she vows that there should be no spreadsheet sprawl, that there should be no more manual data entry. And um, through a series of stories you'll have to, to read, um, she has some superpowers like x-ray vision and telekinesis. She's an auditor by day. And um, it's, it's an interesting little story. And she has a counterpart that's a villain. And um, their origin stories will be appearing on our website. Um, super exciting. And I, and I caught something in there. Jen Ledger, um, you know, with any great story or Taylor Swift music video, as Danielle, I know you can attest, um, there are always some Easter eggs or some hilarious references that only the real fans can actually can't catch. So for us, only the, the people that are really in the trenches of accounting and finance can catch. Can you tell us about some of those in Captain Finance's story? Of course, aside from her name being Jen Ledger. Yeah, I, and I don't, I don't want to spoil all of it, but we, you know, there's some there's some good little spreadsheet jokes in there. Um, the there there's a planet um, where these beings called cumulons reside, and they help uh, Jen Ledger achieve some skills and some superpowers. And there's some there's some Easter egg humor in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, the auditing firm that Jen Ledger Jen Ledger works for um, is. Uh, is called Snap Taurus, which you probably have to work really hard to understand that that's a little bit of a, a play on Cap Gemini. Mm -hmm. um, but there are little things that we, the way pe what people are named, like we have Jen Ledger. She also has parents um, who have some kind of funny names. If you think about it, Seb and Nomina, uh, like mm -hmm. a sub ledger or nominal ledger. So we, we put little, we, we drop little things like that throughout. And it, it's, uh, Hopefully people can pick up on some of those things. I love it. So everybody will have to go read um, because I've had the opportunity to read this ahead of time and it's it's great. And I, I, I certainly giggled. So everybody will definitely get a kick out of it. And Danielle, speaking of where can people check out some of the cool things we've created to tell her story and to tell all of the superhero story that are coming in the future? Yeah, before I get that, I just want to comment on when Fritz is talking about the origin story, like Jen Ledger makes me feel really under accomplished. So when you're reading it, don't feel too bad. She mastered the automated code by age nine. So just yeah. don't feel too bad about yourself when you're reading it. Um, right. But all these amazing things, um, pieces of content, like Fritz was mentioning the origin story. And of course, no superhero is a superhero without a villain. So mm. we'll be introducing a villain name, stay tuned um, and we'll have them battle it out in a comic strip um, and all this content you'll be able to find on netsuite.com the blog and all of our social channels so make sure that you're following along there well so I was going to ask what's after Captain Finance but I guess I won't ask that because we're keeping that those names uh secret for now um, we but are. yeah we it, are I can say that yeah. look for superheroes that cover of course we have to make sure that we do the green eye shade but not that name so there will be another accounting superhero and maybe an inventory one and some financial forecaster so stay tuned we're really excited to roll those out over the next few months well, we are going to be chatting with a real life superhero of finance in just a moment here. Um, but before we sign off, I have a final question for you, since all of this obviously always stems from the companies we work with, the people that we work with, who are some real life superheroes, both you, Fritz and Danielle have worked with here at NetSuite? Well, I think I would be remiss if I did not um, thank the accounting team and finance team overall mm -hmm. at NetSuite for all the work they do. Um, yes, we are, we are a company, of course, so we have a, a team, a finance team as well, and they do great work. Um, so I, I, I would, I would call out that entire team. Love that. Fritz, you kind of stole my thunder there. Cause I was just emailing back and forth since it is month end close with our finance. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, man, they are the real life superheroes. Um, but I would say also, um, 
Evan Goldberg. I know that sounds silly because I, of course, work for him, but um, the amazing things that he's accomplished over his career and his mission as both a company leader and a human being is pretty impressive. So it's been, it's been awesome to see, see that. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for joining us on this episode of the NetSuite podcast. And I just cannot wait for all of this to come out and for all of our, our audience and our customers and the companies that we work with to um, get a chance to indulge in some of this too. In business, growth is good, right? Not always. NetSuite by Oracle knows that for many companies, fast growth is a double-edged sword. Just ask Sean Nelson, founder of LoveSack. We started as a beanbag company in my parents' basement. And the next thing I knew, we were one of the fastest growing furniture companies in the world. Only problem? We still had multiple systems for everything. And the complexity nearly wrecked us. So yeah, we really need a NetSuite. With NetSuite, Lovesack is seamlessly handling surges in demand and is geared to scale beyond Sean's wildest dreams. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, inventory, e-commerce, HR, and more. Everything you need to grow all in one place. Lovesack Furniture is designed for life. It's built to last and infinitely adaptable, just like NetSuite. Join over 24,000 of some of the fastest growing companies in the world who rely on NetSuite. Find out how NetSuite can help your company with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash love. Schedule your free product tour today at netsuite.com slash love, netsuite.com slash love. Now I'm excited to welcome a real life superhero of finance, Shauna Roulette. She's the CFO of Man Lake, a company that provides beekeeping supplies to beekeeping hobbyists and professionals. Hi, Shauna. Thanks so much for joining us. You are welcome. So we just talked a bit about Captain Finance, her story, and why she became a superhero of growth. What's your backstory, Shauna? Where did your love for finance stem from? Um, I think my love started, um, you know, I grew up in a family with just a lot of people involved with numbers, whether it was, you know, a math teacher, I have a lot of people, um, uncles, cousins, siblings that are also in accounting. Um, So math was just always something I grew up with and was involved with. Um, I actually, when I was a kid, I always thought I was going to go to school for teaching until I took my first accounting class in high school. And then right there at that very first accounting class switched immediately and said, Nope, I'm going to school for accounting. Um, wow. So I just like working with the numbers and the just flexibility of how, you know, being in finance, you get to get to kind of see all aspects of the business and, and be involved with a lot of different areas of the business. So then what would you say is your finance superpower? I think for me, outside of just um, dealing with with numbers, and and I have a pretty good photographic memory of remembering different numbers, but more so my specific strength would be um, also having some technical background. So I see processes and can can get really creative in finding ways to automate things or extrapolate data different way and and pull some technical skills into some of the finance um, that we do on a day to day. I love that. Well, um, I want to know how you're using that in like real life. Your, your, your current role is the CFO of Man Lake. But before we get into that, can you tell our audience a bit about the company? I, I gave a little introduction, but I'd love to hear it from you. Yeah. So Man Lake was a um, small company started by our, by our co-founders out of their garage. They just really wanted to get into beekeeping as a hobby and wanted some really high quality products. Um, And that grew into the company we are today. So we're the largest in the world as far as manufacturing, retail distribution, um, on really anything and everything you need on beekeeping supplies. We make our own woodenware, we make our own feed products. um, So pretty much anything and everything from equipment to gifts to candle molds, all of that related to beekeeping, we've become that one-stop shop um and this past year have um went outside our comfort zone and expanded also into backyard poultry so we're we're working on becoming a one-stop shop for both beekeeping and backyard chickens and anything bird related for that um hobby farmer out in the country 
I love that. Um, my, my boyfriend actually grew up with chickens to a point where we started dating five years ago and he was like, Oh, I, I need to introduce you to my sister. And I was like, you don't have a sister. You've never mentioned a sister. And then, you know, he was, he was playing with me, but he goes, Oh, she's in the backyard. Come out here. And it was, it was his chicken Tara. Um, but I, I love that. That's super exciting and a super exciting new venture. I'm sure for you guys. Um, but I, I want to go back. So when, and how did you end up joining man Lake? So I have been with Man Lake for just over 10 years now. Um, oddly enough, and I still they still give me some some grief about this. When I started at Man Lake, I moved to this area with my fiance. And mm. this was supposed to just be a temporary job until I found a job closer to a little more metro area where we lived. Mm -hmm. um, Man Lake's corporate headquarters is in very rural Minnesota. Um, and so for the first probably three and a half years, I drove almost an hour and a half to work every day. Um, oh for gosh. a company that I was not planning on sticking around with. And Man Lake is just such a fun, diverse company to work with. Um, yeah. That th There was just so much to learn. And I eventually just kept kind of working my way up from the first staff accountant to controller and um, eventually now as CFO. And it's it's just a really great company to work for. So it kind of sucks you in. And um, instead of finding a company closer to home, we moved farther north to be closer ah. to my work. I love that. That's great. You know, of course, with, with all the greatness, there is always some obstacles as we know in any great superhero story. Um, what were some of the big challenges or again, since we're talking about superheroes, let's call them the operational villains, if you will, that you ran into with man, like when you joined and then obviously, um, you know, in the, in the years since. For us, I think the biggest, um, we'll call it operational villain that we ran into is we are a very fast paced company. Um, we have a lot of growth mm. that we're working on and, and like to continue that path forward. Um, but when I started, we had very manual processes mm. and that really started to hinder the company where I had to kind of step in, in my role. And it was, I was tasked with, um, we need to improve here. We need to come up with better processes. We need to look at new systems. Um, so that was, that was a big pain point and, uh, continues to be a, a big area of focus on us on just streamlining wherever we can, um, yeah. to automate what we can and, and use our people for things that can't be automated or to help us grow the company in other ways. I love that. Um, so then how, how did you go about doing that? How did you streamline processes? What kind of things did you put into place? Yeah, so we, um, I think for me, the first area I started in actually outside of finance was in our shipping department on just creating some automated systems back and forth between our previous ERP system and our shipping platforms so that we're, we weren't having to manually type in every last order for shipping. Um, and then we did the sa same thing with our e-commerce platform. So those, those web orders, as everyone goes more on the e-commerce side, would just kind of flow into the system. Um, and just kept kind of trickling that down to each and every area of the company, looking at it and saying, what's our manual processes and, and what can we do to either use imports or exports or um, kind of put in um, in between systems to just automate wherever we can. And how has, how have you been able to kind of utilize NetSuite as your secret weapon throughout all of this? Yeah, we just switched to NetSuite. Um, actually, this is coming up on one year ago that we converted over to NetSuite. And um, a big reason that we switched over to it was just some of the automation and how you can tie it into a lot of different systems. So we have spent the last year really um, focused on what type of process improvements can we get? You know, how can we automate our e-commerce platform even more? How can I automate just my financial presentation more? Um, Anything like that that we can do to free up people's time, um, we're, we're looking at it and exploring those options. Yeah. And, and I think like, it would be interesting to know why that's so important. I mean, freeing up people's time from these manual processes and including this automation, like for example, I want you using you, I mean, how does this allow you to use your super, your superpower, um, in order to help man Lake grow? Yeah, for us, I mean, a big part of the starting the automation was at Man Lake and all of our locations around the country, we're in pretty rural areas, um, mm. which then leads to staffing issues. Mm. Um, you know, there's so many, so many people in the rural parts of the country that you can get. So anything I can do to automate to just keep my staff engaged in uh, things that can't be automated definitely helps the business. Mm -hmm. But that also helps me get financial data that much faster. So I can just 
uh, make decisions quicker and not be so far behind and being more proactive on financial decisions um, to help Manly continue to grow. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, how have you used your, your superpowers that we kind of talked about earlier? Your like the, the technical superpowers to help man. Like, can you give us some specific examples? Um, yeah, I think on, on our financial reporting, for example, is one of them that, um, you know, just having some technical background to be able to pull in, um, from our sales orders and our point of sale system, our e-commerce site and, and be able to link that all together and then very quickly have real-time reporting that can be emailed out to not only my finance team, but my management team. Um, so that everyone's just on the same page there on the financial performance of the company, but yeah. then also not have to have all that additional overhead of um, somebody manually doing that and running that mm-hmm. risk of um, just human error um, right. on, oops, we forgot to bring that in or, or bring this different things in. Yeah. And what are some of those things that you, you know, you're talking about the things that can't be automated, you know, what are these things that finance teams are doing behind the scenes, these kind of, you know, what we're calling them the unsung heroes. Um, what are they doing behind the scenes? You know, that, that really can't be automated, that can't be done, um, you know, by a machine or, or, or through any other type of process, the things that your team is doing to really, to really help the company. Yeah. My team spends a lot of their time, you know, managing cash, um, applying payments to customers' accounts on certain transactions that, you know, that just can't be automated. Someone mailed a check to our physical office. Okay. I got to get that processed and on the customer's account. Um, also just helping, um, customers understand account statements and, and doing that and really, um, just helping our customers understand their financial position with Man Lake. Hey, what do you owe? What have you spent last year? Um, so they can continue to run their business. Um, and then also just diving into questions when managers are asking, Hey, why, why does this look off on my financial statement? My staff is, is the first um, to jump in and, and roll up their sleeves and dig into what exactly makes up that number and, and follow that paper trail through and, and get to the bottom of, of any issues that might arise. This kind of segues nicely into a big topic that we've been discussing here at NetSuite. Um, but, and, and that's been discussed really, you know, everywhere is the role of the CFO and, and finance teams in general, but we'll talk about the CFO right now and how it's evolved so drastically over the past decade and especially the past year. Can you speak to that a little bit? Like how have you witnessed that first firsthand at Man Lake? Yeah, for me personally, it's been, you know, the, the, the typical CFO, I think you, you picture them, they just sit at their desk and they crunch numbers all day. And here's a financial report that I'm going to present to someone um, where now it's kind of evolving, where you, you need to understand the operational side of things. How, how is everything really flowing in the business? And, and you're right there at the, you know, a seat at the table on looking at growth growth plans and business planning and what can we do to help the bottom line? What can we do to help the company grow and just really more involved than here's a piece of paper showing our print where financials sit at this point in time. Right. Yeah. I love that. Um, now you're also a woman in a male dominated realm, you know, not to state the obvious, but what advice do you have for other women who are aspiring to become CFOs? I think just don't be afraid of the challenge. Um, yeah. Just because you're a female and maybe a male-dominated office, um, don't don't back down from it. Uh, embrace it, enjoy it, step up to that challenge. And um, you know, for me personally, it was, hey, I proved myself, and nobody thinks twice anymore that I'm a female in a male-dominated industry um, yeah. or even a male-dominated management team. You just you step up, you prove yourself, and you don't let that get in your way of anything. Yeah. Superpower right there. I love it. Um, okay. So my final question is, and you already spoke to this a little bit, but like anything else that you would share about the quote unsung heroes of finance, these, these superheroes that you work with every day that you wish more people knew about? Just that, you know, again, like I said, they're not, you know, the finance team isn't sitting there just looking at numbers and entering data and doing that. They're really, they're, they're a business partner. They're helping everybody in every department make sound decisions, providing them with good information and being a resource to help evaluate that financials or say, hey, wait a minute, we're looking like we're trending off track here. What can we do to help? Um, so they really are a, a pretty 
core part of the business to help uh, any business successfully run. That's great. Well, Shauna, thank you so much for joining us. You are very welcome. Thank you so much to Danielle Tarp, Fritz Nelson, and Shauna Roulette for joining us on this super awesome episode. To learn more about the superheroes of growth, I provided a link in the description of this episode. And y'all know I can't end it without a shout out to our superhero editing crew over at Lampstand and all of you superheroes for tuning in. There is so much more where that came from. So make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. Bye. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.